Hello everyone and welcome back to Yoga Max with me, Max. Today's practice is targeted really much on the spine. Getting twisty, getting open in the digestive system. Um, stay tuned to the end because we're going to go through this practice. We're going to open up the spine um, and talk about um, common issues, common um, problems that people find themselves in when we practice and when we want to twist and we'll go into some fun arm balancing stuff at the end as well that I'll break down. So stay tuned for that and until then find a seat on your mat and let's begin. So starting the practice as we always do with kind of grounding and arriving, arriving in this moment. So find a comfortable seat on your mat um, if you don't feel comfortable cross-legged, legs can be in front, grabbing the fronts of the knees. Grab a block or a book or a cushion and you can sit on the cushion too if you like, if you need a bit more lift. Um, so it's kind of unique to every person. Find a comfortable seat where the spine can be upright and erect without being tense and gripping in the, in the legs. So. <clears throat> Arms can be wherever you like, and your knees in the middle. And when you find that space where you can feel your sit bones rooting in the ground, then just gently close your eyes without any creases in your forehead. Starting to bring all your attention with all your distractions into the inside. And that's why we shut our eyes. Less chance for distraction. So when you get there, just take a big breath in through your nose. Fill up all the way to the sides of your rib cage, to the front, to the back, before opening your mouth. Just letting go of that sleep, that tension. Starting to really get a sense of where the physical body is right now today. Scan your body from your feet to the crown of your head and without any judgment, without making a story out of any area that you feel tense in. I just want you to notice where is tight, where is niggly, where is um, tense, where is tired and lazy this morning without any attachment to some kind of story about the tiredness, the stiffness, etc. And when you're comfortable and present and with me, take an inhale where you are. And as you exhale, just bring that chin down towards your chest. Keep the spine straight. <clears throat> Let the weight of the head reach down. As you breathe in, lift the head up. As you exhale, stretch the front part of your throat, looking up. As you breathe in, bring the head back to center. As you exhale, right ear to the right shoulder. Not beginning to start with this expectation of where you want the practice to be. And an indication of that is when we bring the shoulder to the ear, so we give the illusion of the stretch, but we want just to accept where the neck is at, keeping the shoulder relaxed. As you breathe in, bring the head back up, and as you exhale, left ear to the left shoulder. Start to roll it round. As you breathe in, you're looking up to the sky at the peak. As you exhale, that left ear is coming to the left shoulder. Begin to match the breath with your movement. So now you're working together in tandem. Take four head rotations going one way and then reverse the head the other way. You can choose guys, so you can go as quick a rotation or as slow a rotation as you need. Luckily you can pause me whenever you like. This is only for the mind, the body, the head, the emotional state to just get aligned. It's literally to connect and to align. Five or four and four, one way then the other. Good. As you breathe in, raising the arms up to the sky. 
as you raise up, start to feel the root of your sit bones pushing down and then this fire in your belly lifting up. So again, we don't use the shoulders to inch up and create more tension, but we use this fire that's starting to build in the belly. And as you exhale, just take a right hand behind you, maybe on your fingertips or on a block or just on the ground behind you. This left hand just on the outside of the right knee. As you breathe in, feel the sit bones rooting down and as you breathe, the spine goes straight. Breathing in and as you exhale, press that left palm into the knee and very, very slightly, still the beginning of the class, start to twist over. There is no need to look back behind you and crick your neck. Just bring that chin towards your chest. As you breathe in, you can release the twist a bit. As you exhale, you can go for it and open up a bit more. Maybe take three of these, inhaling, lifting up. Exhaling and opening slightly, releasing the leg, grabbing the fronts of your knees and curving the spine just to get a bit of relief. And then finding as you breathe in, your sit bones again and your flat back again. Arms up to the sky as you breathe in, shoulders down. Left hand behind you, right hand across the left knee. As you breathe in, lift up, create space, shoulders down. As you exhale, press the palm into the knee, twist very slightly as you keep the belly pushing in, chin towards your chest as you breathe in, release. As you breathe out, twist. Good guys, take the last one as you breathe in. And as you exhale, come forward. Maybe the fingertips come forward, maybe it's the elbows, maybe it's all the way up here. Either one is correct and fine as long as you're listening to the body. And maybe just to release that lower back, just move the shoulders from side to side. Finding a little stretch on that lower bar, uh, back, sorry, the sides of your back. Creating or beginning to create just a really safe space to open up the spine and then roll up through the spine when you're ready. Slowly coming forward to your hands and your knees. Tabletop position. As you breathe in, relax the belly, slide the shoulders, scoop the chest forward to your cow part and as you exhale, scoop the belly in, look between your knees just. Again, loosening up the spine, take as many as you like over here. Two or three, just again, closing your eyes when you need, finding a bit of communication between the body and your back. And just maybe barrel turn the spine, start to move the belly around in a circular motion. You can go one way, you can go the other. You've got about two or three counts over here to breathe and to loosen up. You can come back to child's pose. Any kind of nice opening sensations you feel, go for it. Intuition will guide you. Before coming back to your alignment, knees and your hips, wrists and your shoulders, good guys. Take a breath, inhale. As you breathe in, raise right arm up to the sky so keeping the hips level but starting to twist the upper back as you exhale scoop thread that needle right arm under the left keep that off the floor as you breathe in and raise right arm up to the sky as you exhale go again twists super amazing for digestion and Things moving down the digestive tract quickly with oxygen and blood flow, so creating a lot of movement around that activity in the digestive system. Take one more as you exhale, just slide right arm under the left, rest the shoulder, rest the elbow. This left arm over here can either go forward for now, for now we're just resting. Head is resting, it's not above, it can bend as well. Come back to the breath. Whenever you've got a moment, just come back to it. Take an inhale. You've got options here. You can stay like that. You can raise the left arm up or you can take that bind. 
You're going to feel it in your upper back and try to not lock this shoulder down. Try to lift it up off the mat, um, off the um, kind of chest. Long deep breaths, maybe one, maybe two more. As you inhale, raise the left arm up and press it back down. Push off the ground, coming back into your tabletop. Maybe take a couple of moments just to move the hips from side to side or around in a circle. Deep breaths. Coming in, back to tabletop, breathing in, and as you exhale, stay where you are. Inhale, left arm up to the sky. Let's breathe and exhale, thread left hand under the right. Inhale, breathing up. And exhale, thread left arm under the right. One more time as you breathe in. As you exhale, thread again. This time you're going to rest. The shoulder, the head, the neck, arm can be out in front, that right one. It can be up to the sky or it can try and find that inside of the left hip. Try and keep that head relaxed so it's not tense. I know it's challenging over here. Take the last inhale where you want as you exhale, come back down. Right hand pushing off the mat, lift the left arm up to the sky. Move the hips round in a circular motion, loosening that head. And before we get up, let's find our bum. Coming down to the bum, swinging the legs forward. Good. Bend your knees. So, feet are quite wide for this one. So maybe hip width maybe a little bit wider than that. Spread out the toes. Fingertips facing the bum behind you, if possible. As you breathe in, a little bit of a fiery opener to wake up, scoop the tailbone and lift the hips up to the sky. So you'll feel a stretch in the front part of your shoulders, maybe in your hip flexor at the front a little bit. Take an inhale where you are, and as you exhale, press down through the hands as much as possible. Slide the bum back, and as the bum slides between your hands, the head moves forward on the heels, good. Inhale, move forward. Exhale, shift back. You can use blocks under the palms of your hands. If you need a bit more lift, if your um, arms are a bit um, short, you need a bit more lift. Last one before bending the bum down on the mat. Maybe grab, interlacing the hands and just do little figures of eights just to loosen up the wrists. Come back to the breath every time you notice you've lost it. Good, you can wiggle, you can shake the hands. Last little one. Finding the tailbone and leaning back. Grabbing the backs of your knees. And this is a really good um, starter for the fun part that's coming a little bit later on. So, shoulders relax, take an inhale. As you exhale, release the hands. It's all about the breath. So your inner thighs are starting to wear. As you breathe out the next time, take the right elbow over the left knee and the left elbow out to the side. It's an intense one. Take an inhale, lift again. As you exhale, you can try to twist more. Press the outside of the left knee into the elbow and the elbow into the knee, just for two breaths. And as you exhale, release. Grab the backs of the knees. Curve the spine. Rock and roll up and down your mat. Breathe so you get rid of that um, excess tension. And as you do the third one, you're going to find your bow pose again. Release the shoulders. Unlock the jaw. Breathe in, release. Left elbow as you exhale over the right knee. Try to keep your knees square as you breathe in. Open up that right. Squeeze, knee into elbow, elbow into knee. Breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Last one, feel the shake. Exhale, twist. Grab the fronts of your knees, curve the spine. Take as many rock and rolls as you like. And cross those ankles, come forward on your way to your down dog press. Legs back up to the sky, start to loosen up the back. 
So don't find a static down dog. You always find everybody's body is different every day. So use this time to loosen. Soften one knee. Soften the other. Good, guys. Open up the shoulders. So you're wrapping the shoulders around your armpits. So I'll break this down really quickly because it really will relieve relieve sorry a little bit of the neck tension in the shoulders so really good way to access your lats instead of these very small shoulder uh, muscles is when you're in your down dog as you breathe out you're going to bend the elbows very slightly to the outside of the room as you breathe in you're going to squeeze the elbows into the midline now you can see from there to there, the shoulders are relaxed, the head can move purely freely, and then you can work with straightening those elbows while keeping that same wrap of the shoulder. So everything from the neck down should be loose, should be free. <clears throat> Come back to down dog. Maybe guys, move the heels of the feet from side to side. Still getting the back ready to twist. Hips up to the sky. As you breathe in, come up onto your tiptoes. Now, start to ripple the spine. Scoop, belly towards the back as you find your high plank. As you exhale, bend the knees. Lead with the bum. And it's pulling you all the way up so that the head is the last thing to relax. Again, guys, your speed. You can do this slowly. You can flow through it really quickly. Up to you completely. Take as many as you like. Good. before gently gently lowering as much as possible or as much as they can the heels down towards the floor gently taking one breath in your down dog breathing in nice and slower as you exhale just bend your knees look forward take little steps and start to walk your feet towards your hands finding a rag doll feet in line with hips options of staying still or grabbing elbows and using the hips just to sway from side to side just give a bit of a release to the back softening through the feet spreading out feeling that pull down into the earth before releasing your hands and slowly rolling up through the sky <clears throat> into your mountain pose raising the arms up as the feet root down bringing the hands to your heart closing your eyes for a moment opening your eyes, swinging the arms down, taking a stretch up to the sky. Enjoy the practice as you gently float down with a flat back, releasing the head once you get to the bottom. Inhaling, finding a nice flat back, shoulders away from the ears. And as you exhale, find your plank. <clears throat> nice and slow for the first one. Take an inhale and as you exhale, just come down to your forearms. One arm, then the other. Good. Scooping the belly in. Keeping the feet maybe hip width apart, maybe just a little bit apart. And you're going to shimmy the hips. Left and then the right. Just windscreen wiping the toes and the hips. Getting a bit twisty in the lower back. Take an inhale where you are first. As you exhale, Lower the hips down into the mat. Keep the hands where they are and untuck those toes. Maybe needing to align the elbows so that they're in line with your shoulders. Good. Take an inhale where you are. Activate the bum. Lift the knees of the feet of the mat and press down through the backs of the feet. This jargon was all just to protect the lower back from injury. Take an inhale where you are. And as you exhale, scoop the elbows towards you as you pull the chest through. As you breathe in, look towards the right. Just easy neck, no tension. Inhale. Exhale, look over to the left. Breathing in, pressing down for a slight lift before releasing down to the mat. Good, guys. Hands by your shoulders, tuck the toes. Lift the hips up to the sky. Five breaths in your down dog really nice and slow nothing really hectic to think about or overthink about 
and just more freedom around your shoulders, just more lift through the hips. Taking the last two big breaths. Good guys. Open the feet slightly, bend your knees, look forward. Step the right foot in between your hands and lower the left knee down to the mat. As you breathe in, tuck the toes, lift the knee, shift the weight back and pick the back foot to the front, curve down. Take a flat back, breathing in. Exhale, release it down to the mat, roll up slowly through the spine, take an inhale and raise the arms up. As you exhale, open the arms, float down through the hips, let go of the head. Keep going, inhale, flat back. Exhale, back to plank, hands down, feet back. Take an inhale where you are. As you exhale, bend the elbows till they reach your ribs. Remember that you can lower down the knees to the mat at any point. If your spine is ready for up dog, go for up dog. Hips down, chest up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five more breaths again. Integrating <clears throat> message with body. Four more. And every time the mind gets distracted, you just come back to the sound of your breathing. Last one in. As you exhale, bend the knees, look forward, pick up the left foot, bring it in between your hands, lower the right knee down. Four breaths, left ankle in line with the left knee, opening the chest forward, feeling that stretch. As you exhale, flatten the hands. Lift the back knee, shift the back foot to the front as you fold again, take a flat back halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Shift the weight to the heels of the feet. So in actual fact, the toes can lift. Weight is on the heels of your feet as if you're sitting in a chair. Spine is diagonally forward, otherwise you're going to tense the bum and then you won't be able to go any lower. So as if someone's got a string, it's pulling the hips back. Core is still active, so you're not dipping into the lower back. Hands and shoulders are as free as you can make them to be. Staying there until you feel that nice um, turning on of your thigh muscles. Take a last inhale, raise the arms up to the sky. As you exhale, push the air down, come back to mountain. Inhale, float, arms up to the sky. Exhale, float down. Flat back halfway, you can step, you can float, you can hop back through your vinyasa any which way you want any version of modification you choose we're just going to meet in down dog when you're ready bring your feet together at the back of your mat inhale and float right leg up to the sky bend your knee and open that hip finding that deep stretch in the left hand um, left hand string left hip flexor and right front of the thigh as well Really nice one. Take a breath in. As you exhale, bring the right knee to the nose and keep extending the right foot forward to a lunge. Lower the back knee down again. As you breathe in, arms and chest move up. Be careful not to sink the belly into the thigh. Start to zip belly in, keeping the thighs down. So keeping the legs engaged, but also finding that stretch, the balance. Take the arms up to the sky. As you exhale, take the hands down, move the hips back with the bum, pick up the right toes, but keep the heel where it is. Breathing in, as you exhale, come forward. Tuck the toes, flatten the left foot, kind of in preparation for warrior two. Front heel in line with the back arch, swing the left and then the right, finding your warrior two. We ground through the outside edge of that left foot, always to protect that knee. 
if we're peeling the inside or peeling the outside off, eventually that is going to create injury. So outside edge, open up that right knee, breathe and keep an eye on these shoulders. Just give them a little wave. Take a breath, flip the palm, reverse your warrior as you exhale, cartwheel your arms, right then left, go through your chaturanga. If you're feeling energized, you can keep that back leg up completely up to you. Down dog, take a breath in. Open your mouth. Let the head go. Again. When you're ready, gently close that mouth. Float the left leg up to the sky as you breathe in. Bend the knee and open the hip. Feel that stretch in your body. As you exhale, find your lunge. Bring that left knee to the nose. Grab the foot down onto the mat, lower the back knee. As you breathe in, arms go up. Stretching the front part of the thigh, shoulders down as you exhale, float down. Take an inhale. You can go through your vinyasa any way you want, high to your low. No, this is not right. <clears throat> Taking an inhale and raising left leg up to the sky, bend the knee, open the hip, breathe in. As you exhale, scoop left knee to the nose, Ankle in line with the knee into your lunge. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, arms up. Zipping the belly towards the back of the spine, lowering the shoulders. As you exhale, bring the hands forward. Tuck the back toes. And those right toes are going to face the right side of your room this time. Align that front heel with the back arch. And use your hamstring to lift body up. Release the shoulders, outside edge of that right foot. Slow down the breath as you breathe in. Cartwheel your arms. Reverse your warrior. Go for the left first. Exhale right through your vinyasa any way you like. Nice big breath and nice exhale. Awesome work. Big inhale, open your mouth and sigh. <sighs> Shake the head yes and no. Breathing in, raise the right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee and open the hip. This time bringing the right foot in between your hands, lowering the left knee down to the mat. Knee in line with ankle, knee in line with hip. Let me swap round so you can see what I'm doing. So, as you breathe in, arms go up. As you exhale, bring the hands to the heart. You're scooping the tailbone and keeping this really lock, this stira, this hardness in the bottom half, creating again some kind of lift in the vertebra of the back. Inhale, rib cage up, left elbow over your right knee. Now you can place both of your palms on top of each other or you can fist, we call it the love fist, with one palm at the top. As you breathe in, forget twisting and grinding. We want to create length first. So as you breathe in, no collapsing on that right thigh. Lengthen the spine forward like a flat back. As you exhale, press the top palm into the bottom and it's this kind of corkscrew action. Press the top palm into the bottom. You want to aim to get the palms at the center of your chest. You want to notice in that shoulder as you breathe in, lengthen. As you breathe out, twist. Last one, breathing in. And exhale out. Awesome. Take a breath. Breathe in where you are. Have the hands flat, tuck the toes, go through your vinyasa. Breathing in, bend the elbows. Upward facing dog and down dog when you're ready. Any version works, child's pose is always there. This is your practice. We're gonna keep going. 
Take the left leg up to the sky. Bend the knee and open the hip. Take a breath and find your lunge. This time, left foot in between the hands. Knee in line with ankle. Knee in line with hip. Take a breath where you are. Raise, arms up to the sky, shoulders down. Bring the hands to your heart. Stop to lock in that core. Engage the bum. Breathing in. Maybe finding a millimeter of lift in the spine. As you exhale, bring the right elbow over the left knee. Make a fist, palms together. Anyone is fine. As you breathe in, you lengthen the spine. So lots of people I see are, and then they've got no way to twist. I want you to try to find length in the spine before going for that corkscrew. Good. Breathe in. You'll notice one side is tighter than the other. This one is tighter for me. Good. Long and deep. If it doesn't feel good to look up, look down. Last one, in, exhale out, release the hands gently, tuck the back toes, lift the knee, we meet child's pose or down dog after this vinyasa. Amazing work, maybe give the spine a curve, give the legs a shake, open up the shoulders again, amazing work guys. Opening the feet slightly wide, Bending the knees, you can hop, you can step, you can walk, or you can float to the front of your mat. You can wobble like I just did too. As you breathe in, flattening the, la the back as you exhale, fold. Let the head go. Roll up, maybe give your shoulders a little shimmy as you come up. Just do release that middle back, middle upper back. We just stretch now. Awesome work, guys. So, we're coming into what I love to call playtime, which is um, getting all the information that I could possibly give you to help you wrap your brain around these um, crazy um, arm balances, inversions, all these things that kind of <clears throat> shock the yogi when they come to class, they don't have a proper explanation, and then they're kind of lost and then they feel slightly deflated. This is also talking about myself. So, now people hear arm balances, they hear inversions and they just, uh, they just shock. And I was also one of these, completely shocked the first time I attended a class and everyone was doing these things. So, I understand you and we're just gonna take it. We're gonna fail a bit, we're gonna fall a bit, we're gonna, and that's the way we learn and that's the way we all start. So, for the next bit, maybe a cushion. Grab a cushion from somewhere. That's going to be your <clears throat> lifeboat in case if, when we want to fall. It will also give us a bit more um, kind of bravery in terms of leaning forward, which we're going to need in a bit. As a visual, <clears throat> I just need to explain to you and I need for you to understand the alignment rules for this side curls. So I like to use, I use my daughter's blocks <clears throat> to show you. We mentioned a few videos ago, way at the beginning, about stacking joints, right? Joints, which we're going to see today, wrists and elbows, mostly in this particular case. So, when you're stacking your joints on top of each other, it's solid. It's completely solid. Weight going down, everything is equally distributed. If you're stacking the joints not level, everything's gonna break. So you're either gonna fall forward, side, or back, right? Hopefully this little visual helped you because it really does help me. So, Let's start breaking it down. Coming to the center of your mat, bring the feet together and finding a squat. Heels up, squat. Okay, I'll do it this way. So,
So your knees are facing one way and you want to continue to have them facing that way. Right. Next is we've done the practice on twists. So we're going to practice that. Knees stay facing the direction they're facing. Left elbow is coming not there as it will slip. As down as you can to the side. That's your one leg of your table. Knees are not coming this way. They're staying in the twist. Left elbow, not up here, but maybe to the bone of the hip, right down there. So I would find those two places first and then pause. Now, your hands will be closer than, than they need to be. So, as you're sitting there with both places, both elbows onto the hips, take the hands one step forward. They will release contact from the hip and from the knee, but in your head you know that you're going to bring the elbows there eventually. So, that's step one. Squat, left elbow over the right knee, right elbow to the right hip. Move the hands one step forward, keeping the knees moving front. Next thing you're going to do is not lean forward. Next thing you're going to do is lift the bum up. Bum goes up. Then it is about, you're going to want to bend the elbows open wide, but I want you to bend them in. So find that lock, bend the right elbow, find the hip. And from there, we need to stack our joints, moving the elbow over the wrist. And instead of looking back, look forward. When the elbows are in line with the wrists, you can float the legs up to the sky. That's your side crawl. Now first, you'll probably want two things. The go-to is we don't want to bend our elbows so you'll find either this happening or that happening it will kill your wrists so one little fact bend your elbows otherwise people will just lean forward and they'll be too low that's another one so bum up scoop the elbows in find the legs of your table look forward float the legs up if you get there, you can try to slide that right leg that's underneath, forward, left leg that's behind, back. This is all crazy stuff at the beginning. And once it clicks, I promise you, since everything is resting on a supportive system, it will feel like nothing. And I promise you, because I also started by bashing my face in. So... Let's do it on the other side. I'll break it down again. And we'll just have fun with it. Come into a squat. Maybe move your pillow to the other side. <laughs> squat with the toes facing, the off facing kind of the center actually. Coming down into a squat. Realign. Elbow over the left knee as over and under as you can. The left elbow aiming to find its way in. So remember that wrapping of the shoulder blades, it's gonna help you in this bit too. Once you get there, move the hands one step forward. It will unconnect or disconnect the legs, keeping the knees facing front. However, you know that you're going for that again. Inhale, lift the bum. From there, stop to lock one shoulder, then bend the other elbow in. Find your kind of stacked vertebra. When your head is forward, peep, there's a pillow. Or you can lift it back up and then you can extend. Left leg forward, right leg back. So in these kind of places, if you keep the hands close to you and you go for lifting the leg, the leg is gonna whoop and you're gonna fall back, right? If even you're up where you are in your side crow, but you're looking backwards, it's also going to take you back. So look forwards, edge forwards onto the wrists, and slowly, with time, it will get there. When you're ready, 
wrists are going to be a bit sensitive, so we're going to stretch them out. <clears throat> Come up onto your knees. Bring the palms of your hands together. Press the fingertips down. And then flip the palms over to one side. So you're pressing the heels of your hands into the floor. As you breathe in, you're going to shift the weight to the left. As you breathe out, opening it up. Good. You're going to feel that nice stretch that's well deserved. Probably feeling really weird and open in your middle back, especially from all those twists. Flipping the palms of the hands when you're ready. Pressing the back of the left hand as you breathe in, move over to the right. As you breathe out, move over to the left. As many times as you like. Coming down to child's pose when you're ready. Big toes touching, knees apart or together where you like. Resting either head for um, arms forward or resting the arms back behind you just to give those wrists an extra little massage. Resting the whole of your head, letting that tailbone move back towards the ears. Thank you everyone for joining me in today's session of Yoga Max. If you liked or found it useful at all, just pop a like or a share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, I love um, listening to your comments. So if you have anything to add or any questions, just scroll down to the bottom. Just leave me a comment right there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Even if you've got um, something you want to work on and uh, um, a little recommendation for me for next video that would be awesome too so have a great day and i'll see you next time on the mat